Good afternoon everybody and good morning to the folks from the Americas. Welcome to this interesting webinar on new developments in gluten-free. The gluten-free market is booming and consumers are eager to try new products with great taste and texture. And pea proteins are going to be part of the solution in creating these great products. This webinar is organized by Bridge to Food and Kosuka. My name is Gerard Klein Essink, director of Bridge to Food and your chairman this afternoon. Three experts will talk about the developments in gluten free innovations and solutions with pea proteins. The legislative framework will be discussed by Cathy Signoret, who is Nutritional and Regulatory Support Manager at Kosuka. She will be followed by a presentation on the market opportunities and growth by Sabrina Marnet, Product Manager at Kosuka. The third presentation will be about formulating gluten-free foods with pea proteins. Marie de Caen is the expert and application manager. Let me take you through the process and the next steps. This webinar will take about 20 minutes. When you have questions, email them to the speakers after the webinar. Today you will receive a follow-up mail with the recordings. So learn a lot and enjoy this webinar. Before starting the webinar and giving the floor to Cathy, I would like to introduce Kosuka to you and why we are organizing this webinar together with Kosuka. Kosuka is a company which is based in Belgium and family owned. Kosuka is running two state of the art processing plants for chicory and pea ingredients. And Kosuka is an industry leader since 1990. So they have a large experience with different pea ingredients in a wide range of applications. And now I would like to give the floor to Sabrina Marnet, who will hand over to Cathy Signoret, and then Marie de Caen will close this webinar. Sabrina, the air is yours. Thank you, Gerard, for this introduction. So we will now begin with this presentation about gluten-free product challenges and solutions with pea protein. So, Cathy, I'll, I'll let you the floor. Here is the agenda of the session. We will start by a brief introduction to the regulatory framework around the gluten-free concept. Then we will go through market trends and insights, and we will finish by formulations of gluten-free concepts developed with pea protein with a focus on bread and biscuits. When you are suffering from gluten-related disorders, making your daily food shopping may become a nightmare. In this context, European legislators have published important documents in order to clarify the labelling of food products. Once the Commission Regulation 41-2009 concerning the composition and labelling of foodstuffs suitable for people intolerant to gluten, that list claims useful to distinguish foods adapted to this condition. Incidentally, following the recently published revised regulation on palm nuts, this piece of legislation will be included in the Food Information for Consumer Regulation, the FIC regulation. The deadline is set for the year 2016. This slide presents the conditions of use set in the Regulation 41-2009 for gluten claims. There are two possibilities. Either the very low gluten claim for levels of gluten lower than 100 ppm and which is only possible in foods intended for people intolerant to gluten. Or the gluten-free claim for gluten level lower than 20 ppm possible in foods intended for people intolerant to gluten but also in those suitable for people intolerant to gluten. This latest being defined as food for normal consumption or food for particular nutritional uses other than those specifically intended for people intolerant to gluten. To make it short, the gluten-free claim is possible in any type of food which is targeting or not people intolerant to gluten, whereas the very low gluten claim is not. Another information that is also intended to provide better information to people suffering from gluten-related disorder, as well as food allergies, is the one expressed in the Article 21 of the FIC regulation. According to this, any substances causing allergies or intolerance, either as an ingredient or as a processing aid, still present in the finished product, must be clearly mentioned and emphasized in the ingredient list. Cereal containing gluten are included in the Annex 2 of the FIC, listing the substances so far recognized as allergenic. Now let me present you the gluten-free market trends and insight. 
I'd like to begin with the consumer motivations for buying gluten-free product. As you will see, they may be quite surprising. So we can distinguish two categories of consumers. The sufferers, here 44% of respondents, who consume gluten-free products for digestive health reasons or to treat celiac disease. Then there are the believers, here 56% of respondents. Those people perceive gluten-free foods as good for you and think that this type of food improves immunity, reduces inflammation or even helps them lose weight. Please note that there is no scientific background for this. It's only the healthy halo of gluten-free products that explain these beliefs. Globally, what are the main drivers and restraints for consuming gluten-free products? In terms of drivers, they are quite numerous. Firstly, there is a growing incidence of allergies and intolerance. Indeed, the number of cases has exploded in the last five years. Then, there has been advancement in diagnosis of allergies and celiac disease. As my colleague explained at the beginning, there has also been some improvement in labeling regulation, which enables consumers to see clearly if a product is good for them or not. Then, I, uh, as I presented earlier, people tend to consume gluten-free products for lifestyle reasons or for weight management motivation. There, ha there has also been lots of new, innovative and more appetizing products launched on the market recently. And gluten-free products are more available than before. They are present in supermarkets and not only in health store. They are present under private labels and so on. And then, of course, there has been a strong promotion from media and celebrities like uh, Nova Djokovic. Then about the restraint. There is still limited product offer. Of course, it depends on the country, but generally speaking, there is a lack of gluten-free option in processed meals and savory products. Then the nutritional profile and sensory properties of gluten-free products still need to be improved. Indeed, it's a fact that many gluten-free products lack fiber or are too rich in fat, so there is still room for improvement in this area. And then the cost may be a problem for some consumers. So with more drivers than restraint, the gluten-free market is growing. As a proof, you can see here the evolution of the gluten-free market size in the main, main European countries. UK is the biggest market, followed by Germany, Italy, France and Spain. As you can see, there has been um, lots of increase between 2011 and 2013, between 12% and 24%. This is significant and shows you the opportunities of this market. This graph shows another aspect of the dynamism of the European gluten-free market. You can see that the number of new products with the gluten-free claims launched on the European market between 2009 and 2013 has been multiplied by 2.8. This is huge and this trend can be seen in most of uh, European countries, it from Italy to Czech Republic. Here you have some examples of gluten-free products launched in Europe. There is a large diversity of products from mere uh, gluten-free bread mixes to bagels or multigrain wrap. In savory options, you can also find pizza base or mix for savory muffins. And in biscuits, you, you have more nutritional options like those breakfast biscuits. There is one common point in all those products, they all contain pea protein. Indeed, pea protein are helpful to develop successful gluten-free products. So we will demonstrate this in the next part of our presentation, 
through two examples, one being the formulation of gluten-free bread and the second the formulation of gluten-free biscuits. Vegetable proteins are good solutions to develop gluten-free products and they are increasingly used in the formulation of such products. You can see on this graph that soy proteins are the most used vegetable proteins for gluten-free products. Indeed, between 2009 and 2013, they represent 67% of the vegetable proteins added into gluten-free products launched on the market. Pea proteins and lupin proteins are the most serious alternative to soy proteins. Now, let me present you shortly Pizane, a pea protein isolate from Kosukra. So, pizane is extracted from the yellow pea, which is locally sourced. Indeed, our yellow pea comes from the north of France. Pizane is obtained through a gentle process, which uses no organic solvents nor hexane. Pea protein, as you may know, is not one of the major allergens, and pizane is gluten free, lactose free, and soy free. Thus, there is no labeling constraint when using pizane. Pizane has a unique taste and very interesting functionalities, as you will see next. And pizane is also kosher and halal certified. Let's go now to technical development based on pea protein isolate in gluten-free bread. Gluten -free, uh, removing gluten in breads is not easy as this protein plays a major role on the texture and shelf life of this product. Indeed, gluten has unique viscoelastic properties, developing good volume and giving nice elasticity to bread crumb. So producers of gluten-free bread are now using different kinds of starches and hydrocolloids in order to restore a network, but finished products generally suffer from a lack of elasticity. During shelf life, starches are also retrograding and breadcrumb texture quickly becomes sandy. Most of the times, also, gluten-free bread are flavorless. At Kosukra, we have tried to improve this situation thanks to the use of Pizan B9 or new pea protein isolate specifically developed for baked goods. Of course, this protein is certified as being gluten-free. We have conducted two studies regarding the use of pea protein isolate in gluten-free bread. In the first study, Pizan B9 was used on top of a gluten-free flour mix at increasing concentration, from 1% to 6%. It was determined that 3% Pizan B9 was the optimal dosage as the low volume was the highest at this concentration. As a consequence of this, breadcrumb texture was softer and we have also detected that it was less sandy and more elastic. Color and taste of the gluten-free bread was significantly improved and the staling rate was delayed. In the second study, Pizan B9 properties were, compare, were used in an experimental design in combination with psyllium. A synergy between Pizan and psyllium has been found as the combination of these two ingredients allow a significant improvement of the breadcrumb texture without increasing too much the loaf volume. Here you can see two pictures representing first the controlled gluten-free bread and secondly the same gluten-free flour mix containing psyllium and Pizan B9. It can be clearly seen that Pizan B9 has a positive effect on the color of the breadcrumb as well as on the crust appearance which is much closer to a classical bread with gluten. Volume was improved too and the texture was much more elastic. Based on this experimental design, an optimal recipe has been developed using 3% Pizan B9 and 2% Psyllium. The addition of inulin is also possible in order to increase the fiber content of the product. 
Finally, the gluten-free bread has rebalanced nutritional properties as it contains around 4% protein and around 5% fibers. Another development has been made in gluten-free cookies also based on the pea protein isolate Pizan B9. In cookies, technical challenges are different from the gluten-free bread and it may be a little easier. In wire cutting or in depositing biscuits, the gluten waste network is not developed and in this type of product, the elasticity is not required. However, gluten is still playing a role in texture and nutritional content of biscuits. Starch-based starch cookies are generally melting in mouth and crispness is not very developed. Taste may be also improved. Pizan B9 may be a solution in order to improve this situation. The final cookies contain 7.7% of Pizan B9 and its source of protein has 12% of the energy is provided by protein. And as the final recipe also contains oligofructose, it is also rich in fiber. Its nutritional properties have been rebalanced and the sensory profile of this product is very nice. Cookies has a good hardness and crispness. They are also easy to bake and they are stable over shelf life test. Detailed recipe for gluten-free bread or cookies are available on request. So now to the question, is there a brilliant future for gluten-free foods? My answer will be yes, of course. Indeed, gluten-free products are rapidly becoming lifestyle options. If the base market made of people suffering from wheat allergy or celiac disease is on the rise, major growth will come from believers, provided manufacturers can bring additional values. For instance, they can add health benefits through the addition of nutritional or functional ingredients, such as fiber, prebiotics, protein, but also vitamins or minerals. You can also add ethical claims like sustainability. Indeed, it fits totally with the positioning of gluten-free products. Do not hesitate to, to be innovative and launch innovative taste or texture. And convenience is, is key. Uh, you can uh, launch gluten-free snacking options. To finish with, Pizain Binain is a good solution to improve the sensory characteristics and texture of gluten-free product, and Pizain Binain is also very good to improve chef life of gluten-free product. So, thank you very much for your attention. Cathy, Mary and I will answer to your questions related to this presentation or our ingredients. Thank you. So thank you very much, Sabrina, Cathy and Mary for your excellent overviews on the legislative situation, the market and application opportunities with pea proteins. I hope that you have enjoyed this webinar and obtained valuable insights in the gluten-free market from the Kosukra team. When you have any questions, send them by email to the speakers, please. You will see the contact details at the end of this webinar. Later today, you will receive a mail with all the recordings. So when you are interested in proteins, you might also be interested in one of the other Bridge to Food platforms. Next week, you can still enjoy presentations of top researchers on the nutritional properties and research of proteins. 18 and 19 September, Specialists will gather at the 7th Protein Summit. Three tracks will be hosted. One on supply and demand. The second on health and nutrition, with a focus on the growth of high protein markets. And the third on technology and innovation. The third meeting this year will be the third Healthy Aging 2014, organized in Paris, connected to the CL. This will be about healthy aging and the first thousand days of life. So enough opportunities to further get more insights into proteins. 
our contact details, as you can see here. As mentioned, you will get it by email as well. And then you can take contact with Sabrina, Kathy, Mary or myself. And you can join some LinkedIn groups on proteins, healthy aging, sport and performance nutrition and confectionery, bakery and snacks. So thank you very much for your attention and we look forward to staying in touch.